Fantastic. Two minutes past one. I think we will get started. So here we go. Um, Prinhando Pablo Cloiso, um, good afternoon and welcome to the final session in our brand new Lunch and Learn series, What Does Good Look Like? brought to you by the Centre for Digital Public Services. I'm Mike Erskine, Communications Manager at the CDPS and Chair for this Lunch and Learn series. Today, we continue our journey of digital transformation success stories from across the public sector in Wales, featuring best practice case studies from health boards to local government and arms length bodies. So whether you're a seasoned digital professional or new to the digital transformation journey, this series promises to equip you with the knowledge and inspiration needed to drive meaningful change in your organisation. This series, we've already featured some fantastic um, um, lunch and learns um, featuring Swansea Bay University Health Board, Vale of Glamorgan Council, Welsh Revenue Authority and Neathport Talbot Council. Um, and yes, um, Neathport Talbot Council was our last session. If you didn't join us, uh, we had the Chief Digital Officer Chris Owen and the Digital Transformation Lead Ian Vaughan um, talking about creating the right conditions for success and also um, how, you know, particularly AI and RPA in particular are supporting their business transformation. So if you missed this session and any other sessions in our series, you can catch these on our Lunch and Learn YouTube playlist, which um, yeah, my colleague uh, Lise will post a link into the chat to our to our YouTube playlist. So yeah, feel free to catch up on those sessions in your in your free time. So today we are delighted to welcome Jason Evans, Open Data Manager for the National Library of Wales. Uh, this session will focus on what good data looks like in the cultural heritage sector and explore the process and technical aspects of aligning data across multiple institutions, overcoming closed data silos to enrich user experience. While this case study focuses on the work of National Library of Wales, it also highlights the benefit of adopting open common data standards to streamline services and improve discoverability within data sets. This work has resulted in new collaborations and multiple examples of data being reused and repurposed to create new apps and services. Um, so yeah, we encourage active participation from our audience. So please feel free to share your questions, insights and experiences in the chat throughout the session. And we will make sure there is time at the end to cover what is said. So without further ado, I will pass you on to Jason. Uh, Kroiso Jason. Yeah, Mike. Uh... I shall just share my screen. OK. Yeah, Pnaam da Pawb, Jolcha Makavle, Shara Devachi Heddu. Thank you all for the opportunity to, to talk to you today. And I'm, I'm going to be talking about um, open data. So the Obviously, we're talking about uh, the culture sector and, and linked open data within the culture sector, but the talk is going to highlight um, some approaches that I think um, should transfer across the different sectors as well. Um, and there's also going to be a real focus on the Welsh language element of open data and how we can use open data to uh, give better access to information through the medium of Welsh. There we go. Right. So the the work I'm going to highlight today has evolved out of the National Library of Wales' collaboration with Wikimedia. So um, as the name suggests, Wikimedia is the parent organisation that looks after Wikipedia. And we saw that Wikipedia was this place where people ended up going when they were searching for information online. And we obviously thought that if this is the place where people go for information, then we need to be engaging with that open ecosystem and making sure that we're sharing our knowledge and information to Wikipedia um, and ensuring that the content there is, is accurate. And we started sharing digital images from our collection to um, Wikimedia and we quickly saw a massive jump in the use of our digital content. So these five images alone that you see on our screen for, from our collection, these got over two million views on Wikipedia last month. Now, it takes an entire year for all the content on our own website to get two million views. So this is this is a massive uh, leap in engagement for us. And here are some more stats on 
the images that we've shared. So we've shared around 20,000 images to Wikimedia for use on Wikipedia articles. They're now available in over 150 languages. They get around 15 million views a month. Um, and so far since we started, that, that adds up to 1.6 billion views of our content. So we saw Wikimedia as a brilliant platform for increasing engagement with our content. And that's when we started um, thinking about how, how we could use this ecosystem for sharing data and improving access to our data as well. So Wikipedia has a sister project called Wikidata. And like Wikipedia, it's an open platform that anyone can contribute to, anyone can reuse the data, um, but it captures the world's knowledge as data rather than long form articles that you see on Wikipedia. Um, so we've been gradually investing more time and effort in sharing and aligning data to this Wikidata platform, um, as well as improving the quality of data that's already there. So you're probably wondering what this weird triangle is. So Wikidata um, works differently to traditional um, sort of database style data or the kind of data that we see in, in our archive catalog or, or books catalog at the library. It's linked data, um, which is also known as structured data or semantic data. So every piece of data in the data set has a unique identifying number. So Aberystwyth in this example is both the uh, birthplace of Mary Williams and the location of the university where she was educated. So all the things you see here become connected, interconnected through the data because um, entities, if you like, only ever appear once in the data. So a person, a place, they only appear once and everything that's related to them get connected through unique identifiers. So this is a kind of mock-up um, example of an item in Wikidata. So you have different elements within uh, a data item. So you have a human readable label. So in this case, Dougla Douglas Adams, and that can be added in multiple languages. So there are over 300 languages in use um, within the data set. So you can describe every piece of data in any one of those languages, including Welsh. You then have your unique identifier, which is the same across all languages, and then you use a series of statements to tell, uh, to describe the thing that you're talking about. So with Douglas Adams, the example statement is that he was educated at St. John's College. And that's a kind of triangle again, that's what we call a triple in linked data. So Douglas Adams educated at St. John's College. And then you can add qualifiers and references uh, and all the rest of it. So Wikidata has over 110 million um, items of data about different things um, already in the data set. And each of those things um, is described with lots and lots of these statements like you see here. So there are billions of statements about over 100 million things. So it's a big, it's a big data set and it includes information about everything from people, places, buildings, services, um, you name it. There's probably Wikidata about it. So, for example, um, there's a Wikidata entry for Cardiff Castle. And um, you can, every other institution that has an identifier in their collection for Cardiff Castle can add that identifier to Wikidata. Um, so you can see here that um, services like Google and OpenStreetMap have linked to this entity for Cardiff Castle on Wikidata. Um, but in a Welsh context, we have National Library of Wales. We have an ID for Cardiff Castle that links to all our content about it. And then you have CADU. So they have a listed building entry for the castle. And Cov Lane, which is the Royal Commission of Ancient and Historical Monuments, they also have data about Cardiff Castle. So through this Wikidata item that tells us about the castle, we're also linking the collections of these three Welsh institutions together. So from one access point on 
Wikidata, we can now access all the um, information that the National Library and CADU and Covlane have about Cardiff Castle. So um, all, all this information is being connected together. And of course, because Wikidata is bilingual, we can actually see and use that data bilingually. So this should give you a kind of uh, a sense of the scale of the data um, that is in Wikidata. So this um, visualization actually shows you all the things that are connected to Aberystwyth in Mid Wales. It's a small town, um, but you can see there's over four and a half thousand things connected to the entity for Aberystwyth. So those might be um, things like public toilets in the town, bus stops, doctor's surgeries, schools, historic buildings, um, people who lived there, and even artworks that depict um, Aberystwyth. So in this kind of linked data environment, all these different things become interconnected um, in one knowledge graph. Um, so we can do things, for example, like um, call up a map of all the cultural heritage sites in Wales. So this is just um, a query on Wikidata that gets you all the cultural heritage sites in Wales. And someone's built uh, a really nice um, app that allows you to search all these different sites. So here we're just looking for museums in St David's in Pembrokeshire. And you can see it's put them on a map and you can get more more information about them and it'll you can link out to the official websites of these organizations because all this data has been added to Wikidata. Um, and we can also do really interesting analysis of the data. So here we've asked for uh, the location of all public toilets in Wales uh, when they're sort of part of a, a wider entity. So you can see there are lots in pubs and public libraries and bus stations. There are some that are at beaches. Um, so you can do some really kind of interesting analysis of um, using information from different data sets. Now, the National Library of Wales have obviously been very active in this area. We've been contributing a lot of data to Wikidata, and we've been working closely with Welsh Government and um, aligning some of their open data sets. Um, but also the public have been contributing to this, this data set for a number of years. And we've got to a point now where there are four and a half million items on Wikidata that have Welsh language labels. So a lot of this data can be um, viewed um, in Welsh or English. So you can see on the item for Cardiff mm -hmm. Castle, you have um, English language data and Welsh language data. So the, the labels and descriptions are bilingual, but also actually you can actually um, extract a lot of the data, the statements that describe Cardiff Castle um, in Welsh also. So taking this to the next level, the National Library of Wales have actually set up their own linked data environment um, that uses the same technology as Wikidata, where we can pull in data from um, our systems and also from Wikidata. Um, and store them with our own kind of personalized data model in, in this environment where we actually have full control over who can edit the data. So it's kind of a bridge between fully open crowdsourced data and our authoritative data in our catalog that gives you that richness um, of the open uh, linked open data. So this is an example of an item for a place in our um, SNARK database that we've that we've set up. So there's a few differences to Wikidata. So we have full control over how we describe things. So for example, we've aligned um, place names with the uh, Welsh Language Commissioner's uh, list of standardised forms for place names. So we use the standardised forms every time, uh, which is different to the open data. And it means that we can extract data sets and, and we can we know with confidence that we've got the the proper form of place names in both English and Welsh. And we've also been talking with Welsh Government and 
uh, Pat Kaveri recently about how we can um, capture multiple place names for the same place, uh, because there's a lot of debate at the moment about um, you know English place names being favoured over Welsh and having kind of multiple versions of names in different communities. And this this kind of platform lends itself really well to that, where we can have multiple versions of a, a place name. Um, and here you can see a visualization of data showing connections between country estates in Wales, their buildings and the people that owned them. So the data about people comes from the National Library of Wales. The data about the families comes from the Dictionary of Welsh Biography. And the data about the buildings comes from comes from CADU. And because all the data has been aligned in this open environment, it's all uh, again, it's all become interconnected. So you can see how for cultural heritage, working with a common data standard has helped us to uh, release data from silos and connect knowledge across institutions. But the data we've been helping to develop in Wikidata also has much broader potential. So here are a few examples of how we've seen this data that we've been working on um, being reused. So. The first example you see here, the timeline. This was the timeline that uh, we developed at the National Library using uh, free open source software that's been developed around Wikidata. Um, and it's allowed us to create a timeline for the Dictionary of Welsh Biography. It, it pulls in images from Wikimedia Commons that are openly licensed. It uses Wikidata to allow filtering and to present the information on a timeline. And we can even link directly to the Wikipedia articles about these people in English and Welsh. Second example you see is um, an app called What Three Words? I don't know whether you've come across, across this. You can um, pick any point on a map and it'll give you a, a unique three word reference for it. Um, and to begin with, this was only available in Welsh, in English, but now there is a Welsh version of that app. Um, and we worked closely with the developers to use Welsh language information from Wikidata to allow this uh, to happen. So we were able to curate subsets of Welsh words about different things like, um, you know, household items, garden objects, uh, emotions, colours, all different things. And that enabled them to, to generate these random three word um, grid references for, for places on the map um, in Welsh. And then we've got the Quiz Porb Div, which is a, a quiz, a daily quiz app developed by S4C. Um, and this uses a, a bank of questions with multiple choice answers. And there's about 20,000 questions in this data set um, that it randomly puts to um, the players of the quiz and there's sort of competitions, they have prizes at the end of each week. Um, and most of the questions in the data set come from Wikidata. So anything from name this sports personality to, you know, who released this album in, you know, in what year to tell me where this, um, what this old painting depicts, you know, what place is depicted in this old painting. All, all these kind of questions can be kind of automatically uh, generated using the Welsh language data that's in Wikidata. And then the final example is um, from BBC Rewind, which was a, um, a site that the BBC were developing a couple of years ago. And when they came to create a Welsh language map of England and Wales for the Welsh version, none of their commercial suppliers could give them a Welsh language map. So again, they used Wikidata to generate this um, fully Welsh language interactive map for their site. And an interesting example of linked data in action outside of the culture sector is um, with social prescribing. So Sports England and others have been developing uh, a common data standard for sports clubs and facilities to provide data about their services. And this network is being then utilised by healthcare professionals to prescribe sports and fitness and, and wellbeing activities. And, and I think it's just a really strong 
example of how if we're all using the same data standard and our data all speaks the same language, you can develop these really powerful uh, and beneficial services. So what do we need in order to do this? Um, so there's two key ingredients, really. Um, you need to um, first have a common data standard that, that everyone can agree on. And um, schema.org is one of the most common data standards that people use to, to do this. This is a standard that aligns closely with Wikidata, which is what we've been using. Um, and it basically gives you a common way of describing anything from people and places, events, services, policies. Um, and it's it's really powerful because if everyone's describing everything in the same way, then you can easily create tools that can search across multiple data sets. And secondly, the, the second ingredient you need is um, open data. So it's all well and good having a common data standard, but if your data isn't accessible, then uh, it's not going to be able to integrate with kind of wider networks of data. So this doesn't mean just making all your data sort of freely available to download. Um, GB, GDPR and copyright can still be safeguarded, but by giving access to key elements within your data, even if it's just persistent identifiers, um, your data can be more easily aligned with third party data sets, creating those kind of larger knowledge graphs that we've been talking about. Thank you very much. That's the end of my talk. Brilliant. Thank you, Jason. Um, I'm just going to uh, bring my screen up now, but I'm going to open it up to uh, to questions. So if there's anyone in in the crowd, in the um, in the audience, I would like to ask a question. Jason, yeah, please pop the hand up and I'll bring you. Yeah, bring it can bring you up on screen. coming Jason at the moment nothing coming well I just have a quick no chat then. I mean <laughs> I mean what would be I mean from a yeah from a user perspective what would you see as the biggest benefits that you have observed um you know from adopting these you know these common I guess these open common data standards what, what what's been the biggest benefit that you've seen I guess it's been a couple of of key benefits for us firstly just it makes it um makes our data much more accessible yeah. So it's it's there and accessible for a lot more people. Um, so that's you know that's obviously a, a big driver in what we do at the National Libraries is just making content accessible. So that's that's really good. But we've also found that when you when you adopt these open data standards, there's a lot of infrastructure in place already around these data standards and tools like Wikidata um, that you can take advantage of to to do really powerful kind of data visualizations and, and to build tools, build things, apps on, on top of it. Um, that a lot of that infrastructure already exists because, you know, there's an increasing number of people utilizing these big open data platforms to, to power apps and websites and things. So yeah, it's it's um it's definitely helped us kind of get more attention for our data and obviously the quality of the data has improved yeah. because once we align something we might have very basic data for a person in our archive once we've aligned that to something like Wikidata, there's loads of data about them and their whole family tree and portraits and biographies and there's all sorts of data linked to that already that we can then benefit from yeah incredible um i mean some of those some of those stats I mean, in terms of the hits you're getting just uh, blew me away absolutely blew me away into the billions um you know, i think yeah. when you're opening slide as well and i mean just as a i mean if there's no more questions coming in is anyone else is there questions coming in there i can see nothing coming in but i mean what would what would be your advice jason to to other organizations looking to implement similar data alignment and sort of open data initiatives what would be i guess what would be your key key piece of advice you know what's been your biggest learning i guess yeah i guess you have to have a a use case in mind there has it has to um you know 
tick some of the boxes for the things that you're trying to achieve anyway. And, you know, for us, that was making our content more accessible, yeah. making it making better use of the Welsh language so that more of our, our data was was searchable and usable in Welsh. Um, but, you know, it, it like like the example with the social prescribing, you know, if you if you can see that there there is a benefit to your data being part of a larger network, um, then I would say go for it. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, I mean, you definitely opened my eyes up to this, um, you know, to the world of data science. And, um, you know, on that point, I mean, we'll, we'll just to let people know that we do actually, we are going to be, um, yeah, we're teaming up with Welsh Government and Data Cymru to um, make um, a new webinar series. So this starts um, next week on the 17th of July. And um, yeah, I mean, the Welsh Government Data Science Unit was set up in 2020 and it's been supporting um, the organisation Transform and Modernise over the last few years. So we've got a session um, being led by Stephen Hopkins, Lead Data Science, the Leader Data Scientist within Welsh Government, who's going to be talking about embedding data science in Welsh Government introducing the new tools and infrastructure they've done and how they've helped transform how data is used by data scientists and other analysts. So if you're interested in that um, that introductory session, then yeah, please join us on the 17th of July. Uh, my colleague Elise will be, able, again, we'll share a link in the chat and also in a follow-up communication to you all. Um, but this is going to continue into, um, yeah, we'll have a break over the summer, the one on the July, and then we'll be continuing a monthly webinar series on data science uh, from September onwards. Um, but yeah, I mean, this just leaves me with just saying, yeah, to conclude today's session, I mean, we hope you've been left feeling inspired, a bit more knowledgeable, especially me around, um, yeah, the impact of data and uh, the work that, you know, um, individuals like Jason um, that are doing in this area, which is absolutely um, brilliant and how we can make things um, yeah, more, more joined up. I think it's one of the key messages here. So if you can, um, if you have got some time just to leave us some feedback um, on you know, the session today, what were your main takeaways? Anything that we can do to sort of improve these um, and iterate these lunch and learn sessions, then please do let us know by um, going in and, feeding, and filling in our event feedback survey. Um, and that leaves us with just to say um, a big thank you, um, a massive thank you to Jason, um, a massive thank you to uh, yeah everyone else um, who's come to join our session today. And this is our last in the session, but not last in our Lunch and Learns. We will be taking a break for the summer, be planning our next um, series in the autumn. But if you do want to share like Jason is today, um, working in the open is our sort of our motto. If you want to come and share some of your own projects, doesn't matter how little or when it is, we really want to hear about it, any learnings that you've had, then please um, get in touch with um, the CDPS and we will um, we'll put, we'll pencil you in for a future Lunch and Learn session. But um, have a great afternoon, everybody. And um, thank you again, Jason. And we'll, we'll see you all soon. Have a good week. Ciao.